Hello and welcome to Chess with Simon. I'm Simon. Okay, so Tom uh, Shepherd has taken up the challenge against me. Tom used to play for the uh, Oxfordshire school team, which I did a bit of coaching for. He's a very good player. He's one of the best players in Oxfordshire. He's played d4, I've played knight f6. Tom's a Grunfeld expert, so in these videos we're trying to show that the Grunfeld and the Nadorf equalise. Well, Tom's a Grunfeld expert, so um, it'd be interesting to see what he's got. Uh, there's part of me that's tempted to play a Nimzo or a Queen's Gambit decline, but you know what? It'd be quite interesting to see what he makes of the white side of it. Um, we're more interested in learning than winning, right? Aren't we? I suppose so. Um... I'm having to do this from my profile page because I bungled I bungled the last recording. So here, this is what we saw, which is we saw this position from Black, which is an interesting hybrid of a reverse Sicilian and a Queen's Indian. You know, Black's playing kind of slightly Queen's Indian, slightly reverse Sicilian, and I guess I figured that in both openings, G3 is a good line. Like if this were, for instance, if the knights were on C6 and F6, then G3 is like the book move. Um, and in the Queen's Indian, G3 is the main line. So I'm playing G3. The stats, the slight stats for E3 are slightly less good. Uh, sorry, the stats for E3 are slightly better. But um, and then just playing D4. But I don't know. I like G3, and I like the logic of G3, and and it's links to other systems that I understand. Um, this one against Nick. Against Nick, basically I castled, he castled. Knight c6 looks like it's in our future. I don't, and then I don't know what White plays after that. Actually, I don't know what um, after Knight c6. White's got a massive choice. Yeah, it's kind of, but there's a lot of games in this line. White's got. Uh, I I didn't know this was such a Tobiah, but um, White's got a big choice from there. Okay, so that's just a couple of moves in the future, really. Um, this one yeah I decided to pin the knight rather than play f6 there's a beautiful line let's look at the beautiful line which I'm choosing not to go into because it's kind of not mine so the beautiful line is um, not bishop g4 but f6 takes takes uh, white can take here and black can't take with a bishop because then I think the queen check on h5 is the end of the game. You lose a piece. Uh, uh, black loses a piece. So you just develop. So now we've gambited two pawns by the look of it. But then you've got queen e4. White has to castle by the look of it. Bishop h3 is a good developing movement and threatens two things. It threatens the mate and it threatens the rook. White can defend but then you've got knight g4. Knight c3 is so complicated, I mean, so tactical. And then black can even sack the whole queen and then get the rook and the queen back. And I think we end up with, we've got an exchange, but white's got two pawns. So, could be quite equal, though it looks like black actually won that particular version. So I didn't go for that. Uh, don't quite know why now. I didn't go for that because I just thought, let's just develop... Um, you know, it can't be wrong. I don't think, um, it can't be wrong. So we're just going to develop and we're going to play our own game. Okay. Um, against Gareth, we just played C5 because it's the, it's the, uh, it's the right move. We just played C5. Um, it's got the best stats, it's the most commonly played, it's the kind of Grunfeld concept um, of, you know, just just putting pressure on that d4 pawn. Um, so that's fine, that's still well in theory there, well in theory. And then this one, uh, we played knight c3, our opponent played g6, is it Joseph? Um, it's a really good player. So I think now we're playing e3 at some point and we're pushing for d4. I think you can't quite get a Maroxy binding. So after 
After knight f3, bishop g7, d4, takes, takes, black's got knight c6, and I think white has to play knight c2. Maybe you can still play for e4, I don't know, but we're not doing that. We're go I think we're going to play e3, or some other such business. Um, this one, beautiful from Mark, logical response, f5, f5. Uh, Sort of really nice structure from black. I think, you know, white's either going to expand on the queen side or white's going to play for the d5 square, possibly pinning this knight. Uh, you know, and then, then this knight starts going things like e1, c2, e3, d5. You know, if we can if we can keep a hold on the d5 square, then we're not going to lose to a smashing attack on the king's side. So I think we now just castle king side. I suppose the danger is... But what if e4? So maybe we're playing d3. Okay, I think we're playing d3. The database thinks we're playing d3 too. It thinks castling's a bad idea. What happens when you castle? Do they play e4? Well, it says f6, but I'd be a bit worried about e4 actually. So we're not going to... We're going to play d3. That's a good move. I mean, that pawn's never going to d4, right? And that's a good move. Stops e4. We like it. This by Keith. King's Indian. C6 is a common move. Slightly off the main line. Main line is E5, right? E5, castle, knight, C6, D5, and you're into that really sharp stuff. Um, so... I was thinking about playing bishop e3, I've got to say, and the reason I was worried about bishop e3 here is because I was worried about knight g4, but do they not play knight g4? Oh, hang on, knight g4, knight g4, yeah they do. Yeah, I don't like that particularly, all that messing around, it's a bit easier when they've played e5, but I wanted to play h3 so then I could play bishop e3, but maybe that's a bit slow. Okay, I'll castle fine. I'll castle and assume that black's kingside attack is not too dangerous. You know, that's the worry, isn't it? You're castling into this typical kingside attack. This, Liam has played d3. So I assume I'm playing e6 here, am I? e6, knight, e7, castling right into that horrible attack. Okay, so a6 is more common but not very good. Knight f6 is pretty common. e6. e6 is common, but it doesn't turn out very well for black. e6. I'm oh, sorry, that wasn't e6, that's f6. e6. Then we might see takes, takes, always f5, right? G takes, E takes. Okay. Well, so hard to know, isn't it? I don't like the idea of playing knight f6, even though the stats are good. It's such a natural looking move, but I don't really understand the knight f6 way of meeting this. But maybe I need to learn. I mean, look at the stats. Queen e1. Knight d7. Oh, that's clever, look. Gosh, this is a serious decision because it also affects the Nigel game. Hi, guys, by the way. I'm not playing a6. All right, well, given that e6 is troubling, should we just play knight f6? The whole point is it's different because when the bishop takes here, the knight can go to d7. Okay, I'm just going to believe this is going to work. We haven't got all day, right? Just believe. This is an interesting one. The knight manoeuvre coming back to expose the bishop. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, bishop e3 is so natural here. Bishop e3... Stats are terrible, we're going to do it anyway. 
Bishop e3. Look. Is it really that bad? I think it's a good move. Queen d2, knight c6, d5. What happened? They played f5, did they? All right. Okay, I've got news. We're doing it. It might... I believe in it. I, can't, I don't believe that that can be wrong. Bishop e3. Who cares about the stats? Ian Bush. Got to play this. I mean, what does he do next? e5 or queen e2, I think. This is scary, though, because I think he knows this and I don't. e5. I mean, the mind boggles. You take it with a pawn, right? Take it with a pawn. The knight takes it. Queens come off? Really? Does he want the queens to come off in this line? Okay, that's for another day, but that's all getting very interesting. Um, this one, so many games. This one is basically like a Schwenningen reversed or a Paulson reversed, isn't it? Um, but it's weird because I've got a kind of Maroxy bind. I think I'm just going to castle. Then when they go knight f3, I'm just going to go d6 and claim that we're fine. What I'm not going to do is go d5 here because what worries me a d5. So let's have a look at the analysis board. So it, the analysis thing says castle. Castle, knight f3. Well, you can go d You can go e4. I don't want to do that. Feels uncontrolled, although it did win in that game. I want to do d6 and just, just say we're reasonably solid. Well, knight e8, really, what, and then f5, is it, or something? Oh! I'm not sure I'm doing that, but I get it. Yeah, it's not ridiculous. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I quite like that, actually. So, but what I wondered here, here, with my move, is what happens if you play d5? No one's ever played that? Is that so bad? And then, the, is it hard to defend this? You've got to defend it awkwardly. You defend it f6? Do then play d4? The problem is, I think they'll probably do that. Uh, yeah, I don't like the look of that. I think that's the problem. Okay, jolly good. We castle. This, we play g3. This is... Um, is this Gary? G3, Gary. That is the... I think that's what the engines play here. And that's also like the theory. You can play E3, you can play D3, you can play other stuff. But we're not going to play other stuff. We're going to play that stuff. Oh, Nick's Castle, but that was an auto move. All right, I think that's everything. It's really good. So many interesting games. It's really hotting up. Um, it's 20 past 12 here. But I can't go to bed without doing my correspondence moves. Look after yourself. See you soon.